Today I'm gonna go over the parts I got in from forced induction inner chillers down in Australia. I'm gonna go over the parts that I got, what the parts do for the LSA blower and how it's gonna help make horsepower and how some of the parts as well are going to help keep things cooler. But before I get into it, please hit subscribe, hit like, and also comment down below if you're enjoying these videos, what you think about this one, even stuff you'd like to see on the channel. All those things are things that you can do for free to help support the channel and help me out. So I sure do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So what we've got here is a 20 millimeter lid spacer for a LSA supercharger. This here piece goes on the outside of the blower. I'm gonna show it to you here in a minute on the blower. It is a really nice design. It comes with a one piece O-ring. See if y'all can see that. It's got a one piece O-ring the whole way around the lid spacer itself. And then the center piece that's used for the brick, it comes with a one piece, really thick, really nice O-ring gasket. And this gets pressed into where the orange gasket was on the blower itself. And then the orange gasket, the stock one, gets pressed into this one and will seal up against the uh, brick inside the lid. So, the reason for this, on the lid, if you've ever looked at a ZL1 or CTSV lid, they all suffer from the back ports not getting a lot of air. So let's take a look at that. Here is the ZL1 style lid. This up here is the front, obviously. Back here is the back side of it. So if we look at it from a side profile, you can tell how small it gets back here in the back. That is where your back cylinders are. So as we take a look at this, you can see back here in the back, this is where your back cylinders are. This is where all your intake ports are down through here and down through here. So as you can see, with that being pinched way down like that, it limits the amount of airflow that you can get into those back cylinders somewhat. Sometimes oil will even collect back here as the air is trying to force its way past. So that's one, one part of it. The other part is the spacer is a really tough composite material. So we are now going to isolate the metal lid and brick further away from the metal blower that has a lot of heat. So that composite material is going to sit up against this seating surface and the one piece O-ring that I was showing you is going to go face down on the blower itself. And being 20 millimeters, that's just shy of three quarters of an inch. There's 25.4 millimeters in an inch, and it's a 20 millimeter spacer. They also sell a 10 millimeter spacer as well. Now, something to keep in mind is on your car, the amount of room that you have in between your hood and your lid is going to dictate what spacer you can run what size, either the 10 millimeter or the 20 millimeter, and uh, how much clearance you're going to have. So on mine, I have a Weapon X hood that has a higher cowl on it, and my Z01 lid is milled, so that's going to help give me room as well. So I will have no problem fitting the larger spacer underneath my hood. Let's talk some numbers. On a CTSV that they dynoed, if you go to Force Induction Inner Chillers website, 
They have dyno videos and they did a before and after of a 10 millimeter spacer and no 10 millimeter spacer. The car without the spacer made 517.6 rear wheel horsepower and 538 pound feet of torque. Now, then they did the 10 millimeter spacer install, made another run right after that, and peak increased to 535.2 horsepower and 554 pound feet of torque. So the peak to peak gain was 17.6 horsepower and 16 pound feet of torque. Now something I want to point out that's a really good gain and it started gaining power right around the 3000-ish RPM mark is when it really started to pick up. I'll show a picture of the dyno run graph here. So something that comes to my mind when it comes to this is they said with a 20 millimeter spacer, you have to change the tune and do air to fuel ratio work with the fueling. On the 10 millimeter spacer, you can just install that into the car and you don't have to make a tuning change according to forced induction interchillers. So on this one, if you get a 20 millimeter, they said that you will have to make fueling changes. It makes that big of a difference on the airflow. So when I'm thinking about how this is going to do on my car, I obviously was pushing over 800 rear wheel horsepower versus lower 500 rear wheel horsepower like their test car, which did not appear to be cammed, did not have uh, aftermarket heads on it and a lot of other things so i personally would expect the gain on my car to be bigger than that car so as your mods go up i would expect the increase to be more that's the way i think about it and they do not have any dyno numbers on the 20 millimeter spacer this they didn't make for a while they used to only make the 10 millimeter spacer and then they said they started to get more and more requests for the 20 millimeter spacer, which they run on their cars. And then they started making it for the public. So I was able to get some, they had it in stock. Also these bolts are longer bolts for your lid since it's having to go through the uh, lid and into the blower and through your lid spacer. So that's the lid spacer. We'll take another look uh, at it setting on top of the blower here in a minute. You're probably looking at this through this video saying, what is that? This is a like a metal aluminum backed insulated sticky back blanket. This is going to go on the bottom side of the blower and it wraps all the way up the back side of the blower where the back side of the rotors are and even in the picture i'm going to show you here it goes up underneath the bottom of the snout so it's going to protect from all the radiant heat coming up from the valley cover area from the engine from the water pump underneath the snout of the blower and all that here's a couple pictures of what it looks like installed from off of their website And so now a couple numbers for you. This, this isn't, as I'm showing you, your average just like aluminum tape. It's definitely thicker than that. The numbers from forced induction interchillers on this wrap is 1200 degrees Fahrenheit blockage of direct heat and 2190 degrees 
blocking of radiant heat. Radiant heat is the type of heat we're getting from the engine, which, you know, probably is around, it's over 200, maybe 230 degrees-ish coming up from the valley cover area directly. And so this is going to also help keep it cool. Later on, I'm going to try to do a video once the car's up and running. And I want to see real world because I do like to street drive this as well as track it. I'm interested in how much cooler all this is going to keep the blower and keep my IATs when I'm just driving down the road, cruising. I have a big trunk ice tank, an EMP pump, a CNR intercooler, and that ZL1 brick that you saw. So when I was cruising down the road in the hot Texas heat, in the very hot summertime, it would get between 15 to 20 degrees above ambient. But normal, when it wasn't ridiculously hot outside, like 100 degree days, it was more like 10 to 15 degrees, roughly. So, I'm going to do a little bit of follow-up with y'all and let you know, real-world driving, what the numbers are on how cool it's staying, because I'm very interested in that as well. So now, let's take a look a little bit more about how this looks setting on the blower and with the lid setting on it. And I'll show y'all some shots of that. We've got our blower. I've still only got the one side ported. The other side I still have to port. So pay that no, never mind. So now, like I was saying, you've got your lid. Your lid, which in the back doesn't have much flow for the back runners. It normally sits just like this down on it, completely flush. And as you can see, these back here in the back, like that's where your fuel injector boss is. So it's already at that point gotten really, really low as far as the volume that it has up here. Up, up here, your front and fuel injector boss is right here. So you've still got a bunch of room underneath this lid for air to flow. So the back cylinders are definitely suffering. So now we'll put the lid on to give y'all an idea. Again, that one piece overing goes down. You have a locator dowel pin up here and one in the back. They made a hole for it. You just gotta line it up and it'll sit right down on it. Okay, so you can already tell, especially on the side that's cleaned up and hoarded and polished, look how much room now this is going to really lift in space the lid itself off of it. Back here, you can see in the back too, just how much it's going to raise it. So now we'll set our lid back on. And again, this is just for showing y'all, obviously you still have a center section of gaskets and stuff to put in. But I just wanted to show y'all this real quick. This is not a installation video by any means. So there you go. Now the lid's on. Here's your spacer sitting right in here. The whole way across. So it, it's definitely going to let it breathe a lot more. We'll get another shot at this. So here's another look at it. You can see how much that 20 millimeter lid spacer is spacing up that lid for us. And back here in the back, you can get an idea as well as to how much it's lifting it up and giving us room. Again, it's composite material. It's very, very strong. And it is going to isolate. This is going to be hot. This is going to be hot as well. But now 
we have some room here in between with composite plastic, which is going to help keep the lid cooler as well as help the flow. Now we'll take a better look here at what it looks like inside. As you can see, it is really going to give a lot more room and a lot more flow to those back runners. So that's gonna cap off this video. Uh, Y'all let me know how you liked it. Let me know what you think. If you want to see an install video of this, leave it in the comments below. Let me know if, if you're interested in an install video. I might do one of that and possibly even of the thermal blanket that's going to go down on the bottom. But that'll do it for now. Please like, please subscribe, and leave me some comments. Let me know what y'all think.